Hey, Ted, what's today's video topic? Got it right here on the scroll. Oh, crap. What's wrong? It's written in Goblin. Ah, oh, don't worry. I got you, fam. <laughs> oh, that's better. It says we're doing D&D &D spells go to tier one for the bard. Welcome to Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds, I'm Nerdarchist Dave, and as usual, I'm hanging out with this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. Hey, maybe it's your first time visiting Ted's basement. It's a place where we like to discuss news, views, and homebrews for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Sometimes we even talk about other role-playing games. So if you don't want to miss a single video, don't forget to crit hit that subscribe button and to tune to that notification bell. All right, so we're going to go back to our go-to spells series. Uh, we're going to go to tier one, and we're talking about bards this time. For this one, we're going to want to use our handy-dandy devices so we can pull up D&D &D Beyond. So as usual, we have kind of a, a method to our math madness, and we do an attack spell, a buff spell, a defensive spell, a iconic spell, an overlook spell, and a utility spell. Indeed. So let's start off with that yield attack spell. What are we looking at for this one? All right, for this one, it's a first level spell, Dissonant Whispers. It's a range of 60 feet, action to cast it, only a verbal component. It's an enchantment spell and has a wisdom saving throw with damage is psychic. You whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear, racking it with terrible pain. Target must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it takes three dice of psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from you. The creature doesn't move into obvious dangerous ground, such as a fire or a pit. On a successful save, the target takes half as much damage and doesn't have to move away. A deafened creature is auto automatically succeeds on the save. Higher levels, when you cast a spell using a slot of second level or higher, the damage increases by a die six for each slot above first level. So one of the reasons why I chose Dissonant Whispers is, one, the only class that actually gets it is Bard. Now there are some subclass options that will give, give you access to the spell, but the other thing, not only is it an attack spell that does psychic damage, but because it's one of those few things in the game that requires a creature to use its move action to do something, which could set it up for other things, make it take damage because of maybe a booming blade or something along those lines, because it doesn't cause forced movement. It forces you to use your movement, which is really different. So I feel like there's some, definitely some clutch situations that you'd be able to use this spell. All right, so our buff spell, we're looking at Fairy Fire. It's also a first level spell, casting time in action. Uh, it's a 20 foot cube with a ra range of 60 feet. Only has a verbal component. Duration is a minute with concentration. It's evocation and requires a, a deck save. Each object in a 20 foot cube within range is outlined in blue, green, or violet light. Your choice. Any creature in the area when the spell is cast is also outlined in light if it fails its deck saving throw. For the duration, objects on affected creatures shed dim light in a 10 foot radius. Any attack roll against an affected creature or object has advantage if the attacker can see it, and the affected creature or object can't benefit from being invisible. Now, I think this is a great uh, buff spell for a couple reasons. One, it's also a debuff spell. If something is invisible or hiding, it debuffs them. They're no longer invisible. You can find them. And not only that, anything in that huge area that you've just cast it on gives your whole party advantage to attack them. That's a super useful spell. So, I mean, you know, that, that's why it's a buff. It's giving advantage to your allies. And we all know how advantageous advantage is. Absolutely. Now, speaking of buff, why don't you buff your game by checking out D&D Beyond, the sponsor of this video. It also made sorting these spells so much easier. We can pull them up on our device. We can read them and talk about them. It just makes our life easier as D&D players and dungeon masters. And D&D Beyond, you know, uh, also has a variety of free content. They've got the videos, they've got the articles, and all the stuff from the SRD. You don't even have to go, you know, pay for the service. It can be free. I recommend getting the paid stuff because getting access to all of the great content digitally, all, you know, with an easy access to the palm of your hand is super helpful. And they're constantly adding new features. So do us a favor help out the channel by checking out the sponsor. So next we're gonna move into our defense, defensive spell. And one of the things I found for low level bards is they don't actually have that many 
defensive spells. So with that being said, I did find one that's pretty useful. It's a standard trope when it comes to spellcasting and magic in D&D and fantasy in general, and that is invisibility. It's a second level spell, an action to cast. The range or area is touch, one, dur uh, one hour duration with concentration, it's an illusion spell. A creature you touch becomes invisible. Until the spell ends, anything the target is wearing or carrying is invisible. As long as it is on the target's person, the spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot third level higher, you can target one additional creature for each slot above second. So re really useful. And, you know, if you get into that that niche wording, you can do a lot of stuff. You know, there's nothing to say that you can't do the help action. As a bard, you could definitely use your, your bardic inspiration on your allies. If you take the healer feat, you could, you know, apply, you know, dressings to allies, all while remaining invisible. So it, invisibility is a great spell for anyone, really. But in this case, we're loving it for the bard, for the defense. And there's probably some utility applications as well. All right. So next up in our category is iconic. And, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff going on with the bard. So we, we actually had a, a tie for this one. We went with charm person for first level and the upgraded version suggestion once you get to the second. So I'll get into charm person. It's first level casting time of an action range of 30 feet, verbal somatic duration is an hour. It's enchantment with a wisdom saving throw. You attempt to charm a humanoid you can see within range. It must make a wisdom saving throw and does so with advantage if you or your companions are fighting it. If it fails a saving throw, it is charmed by you until the spell ends or until you or your companions do anything harmful to it. The charmed creature regards you as a friendly acquaintance. When the spell ends, the creature knows it was charmed by you. When you cast this spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, you can target one additional creature for each slot above first. The creatures must be within 30 feet of each other when you target them. Now, Charm Person is a great spell for a first level bard, but as soon as you can get access to second level spells and you have the ability to swap out spells, I would say get rid of Charm Person and replace it with Suggestion. As I said, it's a second level spell. It's a range of 30 feet, verbal and material, duration 8 hours, will save. You suggest a course of activity limited to a sentence or two and magically influence a creature you can see within range that can hear and understand you. Creatures that can't be charmed are immune to this effect. Suggestion must be worded in such a manner as to make the course of action sound reasonable. Asking the creature to stab itself, throw itself onto a spear, emulate itself, or do some other obviously harmful act ends the spell. The target must make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save if it pursues the course of action you describe to the best of its ability. The suggested course of action continue for entire duration if the suggested activity can be completed in a shorter time, the spell ends when the subject finishes what it was asked to do. You can also specify conditions that will trigger a special activity during the duration. For example, you might suggest that the knight give her war horse to the first beggar she meets if the condition isn't met before the spell expires, the activity isn't performed. If you or any of your companions damage the target, the spell ends. So very useful. Got, definitely has some more applications over, over Charm Person, as you would expect. It's a second level spell, so it's definitely going to be better. Next up, we're going to go with a Overlook spell. All right, now this one I think is really, really fun. We're looking at Warding Wind. It's a second level spell, casting time one action, uh, range is self with a 10 foot sphere, verbal component, duration is 10 minutes with concentration. It's evocation. A strong wind 20 miles per hour blows around you in a 10 foot radius and moves with you, remaining centered on you. The winds last for the spell's duration. The wind has the following effects. It deafens you and other creatures in its area. It extinguishes unprotected flames in its area that are torch-sized or smaller. It hedges out vapor, gas, and fog that can be dispersed by strong wind. The area is difficult terrain for creatures other than you. The attack rolls of ranged weapon attacks have disadvantage if the attacks pass in or out of the wind. So this is a great spell because it has control effects, it has defensive effects, and I think you could probably find some utility effects for it as well. And I've never seen it used in any of my games. That's why I chose this one as an overlooked spell. Yeah, it's, it's a really great spell. And as you said, there's a lot of, lot of ways that you can use it. 
Next up, we have our utility spell. Comprehend Languages is a ritual spell. It's first level. It's an action. Verbal somatic material. Area is self. Duration, one hour. School divination. And as we kind of illustrated in our opening bit, it's got some cool uses. For the duration, you understand the literal meaning of any spoken language that you hear. You also understand any written language that you see, but you must be touching the surface on which the words are written. It takes about a minute to read one page of text. This spell doesn't decode secret messages in a text or a glyph such as arcane sigil that isn't part of a written language. But, I mean, I can't tell you the number of times that, as a player, I've come across, you know, something, you know, in a dungeon or, you know, in a, in a, pl in a city, and it's like, oh, it's written in a language that you don't know. Uh, if you had comprehend languages all the time, bam, you don't have to worry about it. You can read it. And if you have the time to spare, it's a ritual spell, so you don't even have to use spell slots to do it. It's a great utility spell. It's great for exploration as well as the social pillars of the game. But if you need it in a pinch, you encounter en enemies or individuals that could be enemies, could be friendly, you don't know, but you don't understand them. You could cast Comprehend Languages and then you'd be able to understand them. You may not be able to communicate back, but at least you're halfway there. So with that, you know th those are the bard spells tier one that you know we we think are the ones that should definitely be in your selection with that let us know what we, you think down in the, the comments below add your favorite spells but before we head on out of here let me invite you to join nerdarchy the adventuring party over on patreon ted what can they expect over there we're creating products for fifth edition dungeons and dragons every month for both players and dms alike that they can drop right into their game not only that we do monthly giveaways and our patrons get added automatically we're also doing weekly hangouts with our patrons and more. So quest on down to the description. Join the Nerdarchy Adventuring Party on Patreon. And until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.